event. And I think that we, uh, you know, a very short intro that we'll, uh, you know, be doing if, if you enjoyed it as much as we did and you find it useful, I think we'll be doing more of that kind of, uh, you know, uh, themed uh, events where we actually showcase, uh, you know, uh, different libraries, frameworks or solutions, whatever, that, uh, you know, um, under a common umbrella. And, um, you know, I picked Remix uh, because, uh, I don't know, uh, it, it felt so close to um, Ruby on Rails again. I mean, its legacy is, uh, is uh, you know, uh, overwhelming. And um, I, I had a great time actually um, starting about Remix. So let's, go, uh, let's get on to it. Um, my name is Tadz Pavlakis. I work for Blueground, and you know, it, and I like the fact that they give me the opportunity to, uh, you know, explore uh, new technologies and you know, bring fresh ideas, uh, you know, into the uh, whole mix of things that we're doing. Um, and the agenda for the day is going to be Remix, an introduction, its philosophy, how can we create a Remix project, its kick-ass features, has lots of them what is made easy for uh, you know with remix and some answers to obvious questions why use it when to use it and how to learn it hello remix so uh, what is it it's um it's a full stack web framework actually full stack not exactly full stack it covers the view and the controller layers without you know being strictly mvc but it leaves the model up to us and you know the recommendation there can be anything else than Prisma nowadays. Now that remind, may remind you of something, Aguile. Um, this is the landscape of where you know the all the um, uh, web frameworks uh, you know um, uh, reside upon. We have a range of stuff from server rendering, classic server rendering to full client server rendering, and you know where does uh, Remix stand? On this uh, range, well, it, it's it's about here. It's it's more of a server side rendering thing with hydration, but at the same time has something that resembles of pure, you know, classical server rendering, and that, that is what provides it with you know some interesting uh, traits. Uh, it was brought to us by those, uh, you know, gentlemen. They're uh, very well, well known to uh, most in the community, and I think that uh, they're actually, you know, very likable people. And um, it was started like a couple of years ago by Michael Jackson and Ryan Florence. Those are the guys behind uh, uh, React Router, and uh, they were later joined by Ken C. Dodd, which is who's the, you know, um, uh, famous uh, educator of uh, React and the web overall. Um, back in April, 2021, it came with a subscription model. And I don't know, um, I mean, absolutely. I, I think nobody in here has any problem with uh, paying for software. Actually, we're being paid to write software, but uh, it, it has to do with uh, this, you know, specific kind of software. We don't, you know, this is not a good um, monetization model after all. So, they, I, I assume that they, uh, you know, um, thought the same thing that this wouldn't be actually very successful. So in November 2021, version one became open source and very, very slick. Uh, the website is absolutely stunning. It's the work of Mr. Kenzie Dodds uh, primarily, I think so. And uh, unless you, you know, if you haven't seen that yet, I encourage you to uh, browse through it. It's, it's, it's really well made. Um, I think we like to think as engineers that somehow marketing doesn't affect us, but uh, I think that's a big lie. I think we're, uh, you know, uh, you know, subject to marketing as anybody else. Um, so what about Remix philosophy? Um, it's pretty interesting. It's, uh, it's old school as well. So there's a, a trend here, like, uh, um, as with Astro, as with Redwood, is doing new stuff in, uh, you know, uh, using a, you know, an old school mindset. So it works with web fundamentals, does not try to work around them. It's uh, another framework that uh, says less JavaScript is uh, means faster web. It does so through progressive enhancement. 
uh, which by the way provides pretty great user experience in uh, you know most cases the absolutely you know uh, one thing that i love about it it's the convention over configuration philosophy uh, ruby on rails inspired and uh, it also promotes code collocation in some way which is something that uh, you know i also like a lot the, the, the stuff that changes together should be you know located in the same files or nearby um now how can we start with remix uh how do we create the remix project um just one uh, you know simple uh, cli command away and once we do that um we get to choose where we're going to be deploying that and it, it can be you know we can choose um um it, you can hear me well all is well it's fine it's okay. fine strato all is well okay um so and uh and uh, you know you, you can ch just choose express server or uh, remix app server uh, actually i don't know if you if you if you know if you open up express or coa or whatever you'll notice that you know there are overall no more than 1000 lines of code or, or even less so it's not it's not really hard to come up with a custom server and i i assume that they have um, introduced their own server um because they have you know plans to have a dedicated hosting as well and you know um, this becoming part of their monetization new monetization model anyway um and then you come up with this beautiful directory structure where you can see um what stands out here is that you can see there are uh, <clears throat> some uh, files with a client and server suffix and though this is a you know the secret sauce of uh, remix where it allows you in a you know pretty simple way to differentiate the code that goes to the client and the goes that only stays on the server it's one of the you know tools they're employing um now um you know before we get to the juicy parts i'm gonna leave you with a uh, you know this amazing i know you, have you seen the ah come on have you seen this uh, movie? It's an epic one. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Oh, <laughs> So uh, on to the kick-ass features. So that's an epic move, by the way. Um, those features are, are, you know, demonstrated through a, a little app called Jokes App Tutorial. There is a full guide on how to build it, and also a six-hours-long video with uh, Kenzie Todd. I had to watch all of it before making the presentation. I actually spent my Saturday watching the six-plus hours video um and uh you know I, i'm gonna I, i'll try to um you know borrow examples from the uh uh from that app particular app so that if you go and find you know uh because it's the main it's the main the primary training tutorial uh training material right now so that you can actually juxtapose the things that you're gonna learn today um so first feature kick ass feature fast builds what does that mean that means that uh, uh, actually um, Remix is built on top of uh, uh, Remix. We, we said it is a full stack web framework. Actually, it, it is, but it also it, it, it does so by, by being also a compiler, by being a server side framework, by being a, a client side framework. So it has so many dimensions. Uh, inside of it that allows it to be, uh, you know, to, 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 to deliver the features that it does. And one of those is that it has hooks inside the ESBuild um, uh, compiler. So uh, everything is fast by default. So uh, if you compare, uh, you know, um, a basic React, create React app on the left hand, you can see that it builds in 10 seconds 
while uh, uh, while Remix builds in actually less than a second. Uh, you can see it, it says uh, one second point uh, thirty seven uh, hundred milliseconds, but this is actually this is actually because of the pre build step. The actual build time is uh, 383 uh, milliseconds here. Uh, so everything feels very, very snappy. And it will do so as, a, as the code base keeps growing. Um, so, you know, is build TypeScript by default, um, you know, a tree shaking of uh, ESM modules, uh, um, CSX syntax, source maps, minification, uh, you know, is build plugins, everything is, uh, you know, ready to roll. The next thing, and what they call the secret weapon of uh, Remix, is it, it's, it's feature, it's built on top of a React router. It's, it's like an overlay, and it's called nested routes. And it's the primary feature that drives everything else. So here, um, what you can see is that uh, I have, uh, you know, um, from the jokes app, you can see that uh, there is um, a jokes uh, directory inside of it. You can see several files, and uh, outside of it, the jokes dot uh, jsx. Uh, these all are routes. They appear in the app routes directory inside your app, and uh, they correspond. Each one of those corresponds to a single URL. Something similar similar with uh, Next.js, for example. But here comes the convention over configuration part. And you can see on the left side that the only thing I had to do inside the, let's say, edit file was to define a, a default export function, which returns a component. And what Remix does is that whenever I actually um, request the URL, that corresponds to that route. I don't have to define that URL anywhere. It, 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 it's being deduced from the uh, directory structure. It will call the default function that's been exported from that file, take its component, the return component, server side render it, and return it to me. So it's powered by React Router. Um, another thing that it does is that, uh, and why is it called nested routes, is that a URL may actually span several nodes in that, you know, component tree. So, you know, it's uh, the, the, root, uh, the root route, then it comes the jokes, then edit. So you have three nested routes there. So the component tree is known at request time. So based on the URL and, you know, powered by the React router, Remix knows all the components that it will have to uh, render. And that's really, really interesting and powerful as we're gonna see. And what it does, and we're gonna see on the next slide, is that it's gonna be able to load the required data for those components, the dynamic data in parallel, fill the components with those data and return one full response. Now, a few things. Um, now we said all about that. Yeah. Next one. How can we load data? So another convention over configuration. This is from another domain product, but you get the, you know, you, you get the meaning. We get you get the point. Um, so we have another file inside app routes products that would be probably on our website slash products. Okay, and it has a default export which is the component that will be rendered within that route. And it also defines uh, an export named loader, which is an asynchronous function, and it returns some piece of data. Those are hard coded, but they could be coming from, you know, a fetch call, or it could be coming from a Prisma or from Postgres. Um, so, um, what it happens is that if you check a nested route now inside products, you're gonna see that it has another loader function, and this time is uh, you know is is using Prisma, and that's a product category. 
So when I request a product category and that's a nested component inside products, what, what Remix will do is that we'll execute those two loaders in parallel, all right? And it will use the, you know, the, the responses to fill in the, uh, through the hooks, through, through using the hooks, use loader data hooks, is going to populate those components, synthesize them, and render them in one full response. And this is why it, it kind of makes it the most, the fastest, uh, you know, uh, SSR with hydration framework in the market right now. They have a comparison with Next.js where they compare some, you know, uh, um, you know, similar apps and they beat them uh, every time, even Next 12, which I, I'm not saying go use Remix, don't use Next. I think it's, Next is very powerful. I'm just saying that it, 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 it makes it the fastest, fastest non-statically non generated, uh, you know, uh, style framework right now. Um, now, what happens when this piece of code reach, uh, you know, uh, reaches the, um, the client? What happens then? Well, I hope you don't expect that the loader function will be executed on the client and start making queries, right? Uh, but still, but still, if I load, if I initially load the, uh, you know, the product page on the client, and then I click on a specific category, and you know, Remix has to render that category. It's not going to make a full page request. It's going to make a you know um, a client side navigation. How's going? How's that going to happen? So what will happen there is that what happens there is that actually Remix, when it builds our app, it removes the server side aspects of uh, you know those routes from the client build. So the loaders are removed and are replaced with fetch call uh, counterparts. So when this use loader data uh, hook is being called on the client, instead of being a direct uh, you know, function call, uh, calling the loader and returning the data, is, is act, what happens is actually a fetch call happens. The, you know, the, the, the web, fetch to the web fetch API happens and uh, it, it remotely requests uh, those data. But we haven't de defined any endpoint, have we? Haven't defined any GraphQL endpoint, haven't defined any RESTful endpoint. Well, that's the beauty of it. We don't have to. We don't have to define any endpoint. It has been defined by Remix for us. We don't have to care about it. It will just find its way to this loader function on the server. And I think it's one of those moments. Next one. So we saw how Remix uh, you know, reads loads data. How do we perform mutating actions? How do we write data? Well, another convention. We use good old classic forms, old school fashion along with an action. So a route can now return along with a, you know, a loader and the default export, which is the component that's going to be rendered. It can also return an action. This action is actually being called either locally, if it's uh, you know, uh, a first request that is being uh, server side uh, generated or through a fetch request, um, is being called and uh, you know um, directly from from Remix, just based on uh, the uh, naming convention. Here. Now, the um, this is the um, a major thing in what Remix calls progressive enhancement because this particular piece of code on the left, it is actually going to work with, even without JavaScript, even if we disable JavaScript in our browsers. Because um, you know most mutating most mutating actions are being there are other ways as well, but you know the recommended way is to perform those actions through forms, traditional forms. 
And uh, if, even if those components are not hydrated, they result into good old classic form submissions and you know the remix knows how, knows how to handle them. A few hooks there available also to customize this stuff. Next, Ecast feature styling. This is so amazing. Aguilé, I don't know if you're familiar with that. I think it's mind blowing. It can work with CSS and JS solutions. It can work with, uh, you know, it can, it, it works beautifully with Tailwind. But in a small to medium app, you don't need it at all. They, they actually solve the cascading problem and the name collisions problem and all of that just by utilizing CSS. Uh, so because they know the dependency tree, you know, the component tree that, that are, uh, they're about to render, what they do is using another convention from its route, you can return a link to a style sheet. And they know to add and remove those styles as separate uh, li uh, link elements inside the page at the top of the page and then dynamically as you keep as you keep uh, you know navigating on the client side and browsers do something like i don't know since forever wherever a link gets removed from the dom the css object model is also updated so the uh, its rules cease to apply so here's a, a very you know vivid example of how uh, you know native web fundamentals are, are you know being utilized for something that we have worked so far to find uh, you know uh, js solutions with so styling css with scoping built in post css built in tailwind css works beautifully it's actually recommended css in js with some you know caveats but uh, works as well the only thing that doesn't work is CSS modules. Um, last but not least, Kikas feature is error handling. So I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with uh, error boundaries from the React world now, but you know, error boundaries do not work on the server. Okay, until Remix. Remix has, work, has error boundaries working on, on the server and guess with what? You guess it with another convention. So from the same route, you can return a, an error boundary. And as you can see, the green component here has an error boundary defined, blue one hasn't, and the uh, you know, pink one has another one. So if an error, if either it's a loading error, an action error, or whatever, a rendering error happens inside the pink component, the new joke one, it will capture there and will you know and uh, you know the pink component will be replaced by what the error boundary function returns bad joke error but if something happens in the jokes component the blue one it will bubble up to the green component and that works beautifully there is a, also another thing um, called um, catch boundaries uh, which is more to say ideal for um, expected error, so you're building a checkout in a you know e e uh, you know in a e on an e-shop, and uh, you know you're afraid that uh, if your customer you know uh, uh, you know leaves the page open with you know ready to pay, and you know uh, go eat the burger or something and come back to us later, and they've been logged out. You don't want them to be redirected to the sign-in page, but you want to handle that locally and you know, uh, prompt them to do something there. You, you, you don't want them to navigate away from the, from the cart and the checkout page. So there you may use a catch boundary specific for uh, you know, this specific uh, uh, 401 response or something. Anyway, uh, worth taking a look. Now, what, may, what is made easy with Remix? Progressive enhancement out of the box. Excellent performance baseline. SEO, guess what? Everything, each page by default is server side rendered with no, you know, and, and it's actually also usable. So uh, SEO is being uh, easy. Accessibility, why? Because it has the primitive components there 
link with anchor tags and you know um, nav links with uh, stateful uh, uh, you know um, aria attributes but uh, at the same time most screen readers actually uh, depend on full navigation requests and you know the uh, semantics of uh, URL navigations to perform well and that is also the way Remix actually suggests that we build our websites. Pending UI, optimistic UI, prefetching, what are those things? You know, this is how, uh, it, these are techniques on how to build, for example, when we submit a form, a loading spinner, or being optimistic, submit something, so, you know, add a new comment. So display it as, as it has already been saved on the server, and then save it and then take a compensating action if it you know fails so uh prefetching i move my cursor over a nav link and i want it to you know prefetch the uh, uh styluses in the javascript that's gonna be probably required if i click on it so these are also already built in and uh you know there are several resources on how to uh, to implement them uh, the right way so I will finish with, uh, you know, I will try to answer some of the obvious questions that I had. Hence, I call them obvious. May not, may not be for you. So why use Remix? There are the technical reasons and the viewpoint reasons. The technical reasons are super fast builds, normalized platforms. You don't care. You just you can swap. I mean, it's it's not a you know type one decision. Uh, you can choose uh, Netlify and then switch to you know I don't know. Uh, uh, fly.io uh, simple and minimal api surface you don't have like uh, 50 hooks to to learn about it's a, it's a minimal api uh, better seo out of the box better accessibility baseline very short time to interactive actually once the it's actually identical with uh, uh, first contentful uh, paint fewer better tests because you don't have to test at each layer you can see the route, it, ex it exports a loader, an action. You can write tests for those elements and know, and there is no need to go deeper. You don't need to you know, uh, write a specific test for, uh, let's say the um, controller and another for the service, another for the data. I mean, you could so do so, but you know, it's not really useful there you'll be testing the framework. So it's, you have a, uh, a, a, you know, a, a much, you know, a smaller area, test, test area to cover. Coming soon, service worker support and, and I don't know, it's, it, it should be landing in, within the year, HTTP streaming support, which is amazing. Viewpoint reasons, that's the meat of the pie here. Um, URL first approach. We all know it provides a better user experience. We all hate when we set a link, uh, and you know the recipient doesn't see doesn't see what we were seeing, and we were uh, actually uh, willing to share. Uh, but most, and it it is doable with uh, you know um, client server rendering as well. But it's something that we you have to you know take care at every step of the process. The new, you know, new developer joins the team and they, everything goes to hell. So this is a UL first approach. It works with, not against the web fundamentals. So fewer libraries for us to use. Convention over configuration, one recommended way to do things. And that is where the Ruby on Rails legacy comes in. I think, because I've seen that time and again, I think, the productivity boost and the employee happiness that derives from having, you know, an opinionate, opinionated way to do stuff and, you know, a solid approach to things and, you know, um, a community that think, you know, thinks alike on how to deal with several, you know, common engineering problems is a great tool to have and a secret when you have, and you know, it's the secret sauce when you have to focus on your business and instead of, uh, you know, contemplating on how you're gonna 
approach stuff. Um, this is the secret sauce. That's a route file. You export meta, goes on the meta. That's meta tags for your SEO. Headers, they're gonna be uh, populate the HTTP response. Loader, it's gonna be called to populate your component with data. Links, the, your style sheets and other links. Actions, your mutations. So, you know, conventions. Um, when do you use Remix? Websites, absolutely. Marketing, blogs, e-shops. Don't use Redwood there. Use it for web apps. Use Remix instead. Where SEO is absolutely critical. Small to medium web apps. Well, it depends. I wouldn't go large scale. So if it was a large scale web app, I would probably you know, go with something like GraphQL and you know, um, uh, more full, fully fledged SPA. But if but you know, if it's an internal tool, a back office tool, or an email client, then uh, uh, you know, time to interactive may not be so important. But if it is, the remix, I think it's a you know, it's a it's a very nice approach. Um, or if you're building an ed tech, something where uh, you know, progressive enhancement is very important. You wouldn't be willing to to create an educational, online educational, uh, you know, app, and uh, uh, you know. Uh, launch it in India and, you know, requiring 10 megabytes to, you know, play video. Um, I wouldn't be, you know, I would be careful. I would assess first before using it for larger web apps or web apps where, um, you know, the component hierarchy is, is, is not linear. So you can have everything everywhere. Um, Non-UI-oriented services. So if I was building a microservice with just, you know, um, a little bit of UI, maybe I would probably I wouldn't go with Remix. And if I can get away with, uh, you know, service that um, um, generation, use Astro, use Next, use something else. Okay. How to learn Remix docs. Two amazing tutorials, uh, how to build a developer blog and a, and a jokes app on YouTube, Remix singles. I'm going to be sharing the presentation. These are actual links. Remix tutorial with Kent, six hours long. You know, you're going to be needing food and coffee. And the best way to see how, how to do stuff is on GitHub inside the Remix repo. There is a huge catalog of examples on how to use with Tailwind, how to use with, uh, you know, uh, motion, how to use with um, uh, ready session storage, and so on and so forth. Thank you. Any questions? Did you Thank seriously you, watch? Did you watch the whole six hours, or did you just skip? Yeah, or... absolutely, absolutely. Damn. Can see Dodds, like if I was excited about Astro, you guys should see how Ken C. Dodds talks about Remix. I think it's his job now, isn't he? He's, he's... Yeah, but it's, it's, it's really interesting if you think about it. I love, I love the enthusiasm behind this. It's like everybody, everybody who works with Remix, they are so vested in making it succeed. Uh, I, I think they're doing, uh, I mean, they have, um... They have some really nice ideas in there. As does Red, does does Astro. I mean, I mean, we're actually very lucky to have such, um, um, you know, um, robust solutions bringing so fresh ideas, uh, you know, at the same time. I mean, one reason that Ruby on Rails had, had such a success back in the day, it was because it was such a breath of fresh air compared to, you know, uh, building web apps on Java or building web apps on PHP. Uh, but now we can see, you know, big players like Next.js and like, you know, Redwood and Prisma joining the um, Django from the Python ecosystem, joining this community of uh, conventional over configuration. There's one question in the chat. Uh, can you use Remix with Node, uh, with a Node backend? 
like express absolutely 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 yes absolutely you can actually write your own server uh, and it hooks on the on the server it not it just needs an endpoint to hook into um that's all and i assume Next you year, can uh, you can consume graphql apis right no you can you have to work around that you can but um I wouldn't go. I love absolutely love GraphQL, by the way. But I wouldn't go with Remix to use GraphQL because I, I think I think it defeats the purpose of you know. I would just use its loader mechanism. I mean, I, I think it's pretty great. Um, and if you actually see how it does it, I mean, when you navigate on the client after the first render, you know, so you make a request. And it's uh, like, uh, you know, it's a path like um, products, specific product reviews. So it's two levels deep. So this is a navigation request. You know, somebody uh, shared the link with you on Slack. Uh, Remix will perform all the, will execute all the loaders, assemble the data, feed the components, assemble the component tree, render it, and, you know, stream it back to you. And you're gonna have a you know a server side end page. Now, if you if you let's say you you press back or you you know navigate within the page, everything else unless you have JavaScript disabled or something, it's gonna be client side render, and the whole state management doesn't need to happen. You don't need Redux. You don't need anything because every um, navigation it will know to execute the loaders that are currently, let's say, active on, the, on your screen and refresh the data for you. So there is, for most use cases, most use cases, not all use cases, you don't need a state management uh, uh, library as well. So, so th that's why I'm saying that if you're building something small or medium, it all alleviates the pain from so many things. Okay, one more, Sato. Uh, Next say yes versus Remix. What would you prefer? They, they have a dedicated page on Remix. Next yes versus Remix. At first, they said we don't go against Remix, but that's like sound like Putin. We don't gonna invade the uh, Ukraine, but you know. So, <laughs> so like uh, uh, one month later, they said, okay, we're going against Next, but uh, you know, they are pals of ours and we love them. Um, so they have a comparison. There is a mutual respect between those teams. Um, you know, I, I I can't actually say use one or the other. Uh, I'd say that um, depends as always. Yeah. Try and you know try and see, but uh, you know they're they're competitors for sure. So okay. they're no pretty, yeah. And yes, uh, SSS and less, everything works with post CSS, everything. The other question. Yeah.